good model. And this is uh, such a CR query from uh, Chennai Research Technology Mathematics Department. And uh, I'm here to give a series of uh, 10 lectures on your writing Math 31, Module 1, which essentially means uh, we are going to learn uh, in my part of the lecture series, you will learn about Laplace transforms, how to find them, some elementary functions, and uh, how to use them, and why should we learn, and what are the applications of them. These are the things which we are going to learn in this series of lectures. So let me start presenting the screen now. So, as I said, uh, we are going to learn Laplace transforms and uh, the syllabus for your course, that is Transform Calculus, Fourier Series and Numerical Methods. I'm going to display only that part of the syllabus which I am going to cover, which is Laplace transform. So definitions and few elementary functions only statements, and then Laplace transform of periodic functions and a few problems based on it. Essentially, problems means we will try to find Laplace transform of easy combination of these functions. These means the elementary functions. So that's what we'll do. We'll also learn about unit step function. Probably the first time you are seeing this, it will be very helpful. It's very useful in engineering. And then we will learn about inverse Laplace transform, how to find inverse of the given Laplace transform. And then, of course, we'll also like, uh, learn about why we do this. Essentially, we do this because Laplace transforms gives me an algebraic way of solving differential equations. So we will we'll solve a few linear differential equations using Laplace transform. So <clears throat> that was the syllabus and the objective is as I have written here to learn some new techniques to solve differential equations and Laplace transform is a technique which converts a differential equation to an algebraic one where the solution is obtained. Normally solving algebraic equations is simpler than solving the differential equations. And then we come back to the differential setup using inverse Laplace transform to get the solution to the original problem. I know these are a bit abstract, what I just now told you. <coughs> By the end of this course, <coughs> we will actually learn how to do all these things. Then it will be clearer. So have patience and be with me. Just one more thing before I start. I have not really met anybody who has understood all of Laplace transform in the very first course. So don't worry, you don't understand, just plot through a bit. Try to go around, learn a bit this side, that side, try to understand what's happening. Then you'll be able to follow Laplace transforms better. Okay, I would like to start at the very beginning, very elementary things. Uh, I want, since you are all in university, you must have already made a transition from numbers to functions. What does it mean? Let me go slow. So, in your very first standard, whenever you enter your school's first time, uh, you are taught numbers. Numbers means, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And then after learning numbers, we started playing around with numbers. Playing means what? When you were playing with numbers, these were the things which you did. You added numbers, you subtracted numbers, you multiplied numbers, you divided numbers. All these are the four fundamental ways in which you played with numbers. Uh, even then, initially it was numbers meant actually integers. In the sense, you see, everything you see in the example here are all integers. But soon you graduated to decimals and fractions, you realize, oh, there are other numbers other than 1, 2, 3. Like 3.5 minus 2.4 is 1.1. 3 by 2 plus half is 2, etc. These kind of things you learn. You learn to extend your numbers and then you play around with numbers. Playing around means, again, let me tell you, given two numbers, I know how to do something to that to get a new number or to get an answer. That is something to the two numbers means maybe I'll add or subtract or multiply or divide. Of course, you also learn how to take powers and things like that. By that, you are already in middle school or whatever was over. So you are coming to high school. Then the next kind of questions which you are asked was like this. What should be added to 3 to make it 5? 
please understand the question. I'm not asking three plus five. I'm asking what should be added to three to make it five. Of course, it's trivial. We have to add two. How do you know this? Then you are told, you know, there is a method to answer such questions. This is how you do so, known as solving equations. You started with, you know, made this question. What should be added to three to make it five into a mathematical question? Mathematical question is in symbols you know. What did you write? Oh, the whatever number I don't know, I'll call it x. And the question is x plus three must be equal to five. Then they told you there is a way of solving this. You know, you add minus three to both sides, and then you get x equal to two. Essentially, this gave rise to what is known as a function that x plus 3 you see on the right hand side here left hand side of this equation is essentially a function x plus 3 is a function so basically when playing around with functions naturally it gave rise to what is known as a function so this is an example of a function x plus 3 i'm sure you have by the time you finished your class then you could give many examples of functions so <clears throat> How you played with numbers, you also want to play with functions. Even that you have learned in your class 11 year, for example. So even before we play around with numbers, play around with functions, let me tell you, let me ask you a few examples of functions. I'm sure you all can think of what the first function you all think of is a polynomial function. What does it mean? You may not, some of you may not be aware of the name, but don't bother. What it means is something like this x square minus 2x plus 10 this is an example you can do billions of such examples of functions these are all polynomial functions i won't bother with the definition of polynomial but you all understand what it means and then you also learn trigonometric functions like sin x cos 10x these are all functions which came naturally in trigonometry in study of angle study of various things you have come across these trigonometric functions then you also learned exponential function. This is e power x, or as I written here, 3 times 5 e to the power of minus 5x plus 7. These are all examples of functions. And then I want to play around with functions. Play around with functions means what? Whatever we did to numbers. What did we do to numbers? We added, subtracted. So let's see if we can add and subtract numbers. Add, subtract, multiply, divide functions. This also you know, you already done. For example, here is an example of addition of functions. See, here are two functions. One is x square minus 3, another is x plus 5. I want to add these two. How do I add? Oh, there is a rule. I won't tell you that rule now. But you know addition of these two will give you x square plus x minus 2. You know how to add functions. Remember, this is. don't think of this as just an expression. It's a function. This is a function. Function means you give me, for example, x plus 5 is a function means you give me any value of x, I will tell you what is the value of x plus 5. It's like a black box with an input and an output. So this is another black box with an input and an output. If you give me two black boxes with an input and an output, I will give you another black box with an input and an output. And the rules for input and output keeps changing. Here it was x square minus 3, here it is x plus 5, here it is x square plus x minus 2. Of course, you also knew about subtracting functions. Yeah, I won't spend time on this. It's there on your screen. You know how to multiply functions. This is how you multiply functions. Of course, I'm giving you examples of polynomials right now. But I'm sure you can do it for other types of functions also. Then you also learn division of functions. Where you have to be a bit careful in the sense you didn't want denominator to be zero or you know, a bit subtle. I won't go into details of that. But essentially, you knew how to play around with numbers. The way you knew how to play around with numbers, you also learned how to play around with functions. That essentially, it means adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing functions. In all this, you see, the main idea is given two functions, I'm combining them in a some particular way to get a third function. That is what we are doing. In the first case, two functions given are x squared minus 3 and x plus 5. I combine this to get x squared plus x plus 2. They are, in this example, given two functions where one was 4x power 5, another is 2x cubed. And their quotient is 2x squared. This is a new function. 
basically given two functions you are trying to construct the third function you are trying to give a new function so this is what is meant was meant by playing with functions but not just this we learned even more wonderful play in your class level that is the next level of play which is differentiation what is this what do you mean by next level of play see as i said in all these games two functions were given to you and you combine them to make one function in the next level in class 11 or whenever you learn this you are given only one function and you are asked to find its derivative that means this function d that means this operator d can be thought of as a function on functions take a minute to think about it this operator d is to be thought of as a function on functions that means if you give me a function here i will give you another function which happens to be its derivative for example if you give me sin x i will give you cos x if you give me tan x i will give you secant square x that's a function if you give me one function i will modify it and give you another function that is the next level of playing you saw and the very first so this was the this is the notation i use and i please get used to this notation capital d of f of x is f dash x this is a way of coming from one function to another function and what are the properties we learned all this first properties of uh, differentiation is you know, algebra of differentiation which is essentially this you give me a function here it is 3x square plus 10 and give me another function 5x minus 1 when i add these two and then take derivative this is same as taking derivative of each function separately and then adding you have to respect this uh, addition you know you, you have to understand this addition and this addition are different this addition is addition before differentiation whereas this addition is addition after differentiation this is something which you need to um, keep in mind so d of some function f of x plus g of x is equal to d of f of x plus d of g of x similarly this was another property d of constant times a function i could pull out the constant constant times d of the function so this is another property which you have been taught i won't go into the proofs of this i'll assume that you know it and this has to be what do you say must be part of you whenever you see differentiation so in general you must have seen such expressions d of f of x plus g of x is equal to d of f of x plus d of g of x and also d of a times f of x is equal to a times d of f of x when such a prop when d d satisfies these two properties the english word for this is we say differentiation is said to be a linear transformation i won't go into the geometry or explanation why it is called linear but take it as a definition of linearity that means i said differentiation is linear because it satisfies this property what is the property b of a times f of x plus b times g of x is a times b of f of x plus b times b of g of x how many other times i repeat it i am not uh, you know under emphasizing this or uh, rather i am not over emphasizing this this is a very important property d of a of f of x plus b of g of x is a times b of f of x plus b times b of g of x you will learn many properties of differentiation but this is the most important and relevant for this course so whenever somebody talks about differentiation please keep this in mind this is called it's called linear transformation because it satisfies this property which you see in the last line of your slide and then similarly in your class 12 you learned about integration integration also you know i of f of x is like a playing with the function you give me one function and you have another function with some rule so i of f of x is integral of f of x of course there is a lot of issues here in the sense of concept of integration limits of integration all these things are there i won't go into details so that i'm sure you know it but i go straight to what is relevant to my course here an interesting integral is the following i of f of t is 
integral of f of t 0 to s integral of f of t dt i'm sure you all understand the notations here i quietly change the independent independent variable from x to t that's okay i can afford to do that integral of f of t is i mean i of f of t is integral of f of t dt from 0 to s that means you integrate f of t with respect to t and limits are between 0 and s suddenly some very magic magical things happen so let us observe that uh, let us take an example and understand take f t equal to t you take f t equal to t then i of f t is integral t dt from 0 to s integral t dt is as you know is t square by 2 between the limits 0 to s so when i substitute t equal to s i get s square by 2 and when i substitute t equal to 0 i get 0 so i of f t is s square by 2 please note this i of f t is s square by 2 the uh, thing which is not very um, one is not very comfortable with is you see i of f t i is an operator which takes a function whose independent variable is t but the output is a function whose independent variable is s what is s you never ask me s can be anything i don't care s is any number any positive number because i want integration from zero to s well it can be negative also it doesn't matter but for my course i'll take this to be positive the s can be 3.5 for example if s is 3.5 then i have to put zero i integrate f t equal to t between 0 and 3.5 you can take s equal to 10 i don't care then i take integral of t dt from 0 to 10 so this s is the independent variable though in this uh, resulting of integrating of t and limits between 0 and s so what i want to emphasize is when the input is f t that means it's a function of t output is function of s please observe very carefully that t and s are not related nobody told i never told what are the i mean there is no relation between s and t please keep this in mind what i want to emphasize is when the input is a function in t output is a function in s output means i i is like a to be thought of as a function which changes the function to give another function think over these lines so that's what I written here. Observe that the result is a function of s. Okay. So also this integration is a linear transformation. As before, it means i of f of x plus g of x is i of f of x plus i of g of x. This you know it will this fall it follows straight from the definition. And i of a times f of x is a times i of f of x. You have used these properties very heavily in your class 11, 12, or even in your first year B. In general, this is what it means. I of a times f of x plus b times g of x is a times i of f of x plus b times i of g of x. So this is what is meant by saying integration is a linear transformation. Now what I want to do is I want to define a very similar this is a integral is a linear transformation. I hope you understand the language. We are seeing two different uh, two uh, linear transformations till now. One is differential differentiation. Another is integration as defined here. Here means this um, i of ft is integral of ft dt from 0 to s. This is another linear transformation on functions. That means you give me two functions ft gt, i of ft plus gt is i of ft plus i of gt. Similarly, i of a times ft is a times i of ft, where a is a constant, some number. This much everybody is clear, I'm sure. Uh, so integration is also a uh, linear transformation. Similarly, D is also a linear transformation. That means you can instead of I here, you can write capital D. The same formula goes through. D of A times f of x plus B times B times D of x is equal to A times D of f of x plus B times D of G of x. I know I have shown you for I, but same thing is true for D also. Now what I want to do is I want to define more transforms which are linear. Because right now I can uh, okay. I want to define more transforms means with more ways of taking functions to functions which are linear. There are many more like this. I want in this course I want to study one more such transform which is called Laplace transform. 
definition is here, right on your screen. The plus transform of a real function ft is defined as L of ft. Please note the notation. Previously, I used to write it. I used to. I have defined d of ft, l of uh, i of ft. Similarly, I want to define l of ft, which is integral of no, not just ft dt, but e power minus st ft dt. And since integration is with respect to t, I want to write the integral limits is from zero to infinity. That means here t equal to zero to infinity. Please understand this. Even though I have not mentioned anything about t being from 0 to infinity, it is clear I am integrating with respect to t because I have written dt. So, moment I write dt, you know I am integrating with respect to t and not with respect to s. That's a notation. And now, with respect to t, so the limits of the integration is t equal to 0 to t equal to infinity. That's what this is. So, L of ft is defined as e power minus st ft dt from 0 to infinity. Uh, I won't have time and energy to tell you uh, sort of physical significance of this, but I recommend you to go home, check on your uh, any of your uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, apps or anything which calculates functions, which graphs function, graphing calculators. So try to see how does e power minus s t look like, where s is the variable, e power minus uh, s t, how does it look, uh, please try to see that, you just first see e power minus t only, forget about, uh, put s equal to 1, doesn't matter, e power minus t, how does the function look like, you draw the graph of it once and see, it's not very relevant for your course here, but it gives you a better understanding if you can graph these functions. Then try to take ft to be some simple function and try to multiply these two and see how the graph looks like. Because this graphing is very easy because all you have to do is to type this function in your uh, input in the graphing calculator and you will see the graph of it. I'll show you some of this later. And there are some standard notation. These are all from engineering uh, background. So I will, and since this is a course for engineers, I will use these same engineering notations. Uh, t is normally denoted as time because ft is a function of time, which means uh, this is evolving in time. That means at different times I have different values for f, f of t. So it's called time domain. And then here is a small technical thing. Um, don't bother too much if you don't understand, but just keep this in mind. You see, when I write e power minus st, I want this to be a number. Uh, whatever e to the power of something should be a number. Means I cannot write e to the power of 5 newtons or e to the power of uh, 5 meters per second. Or I can't I can have a units for that. This must be constant. Since t stands for time domain, st must be constant, which means s must be dimensionless. Sorry, st must be dimensionless. ST must be dimensionless means S must have dimensions of 1 by T, which means it's frequency. So that is why this is called frequency domain. If you didn't understand everything I told, don't bother. It's a standard notation. T is time domain, S is frequency domain. So we say Laplace transform converts a function in time domain to a function in S domain. Please note these things. Observe that f depends on t whereas its laplace transform depends on s please note this f in here f is a function of t t is the independent variable whereas the answer here e power minus st ft dt that means you integrate ft with respect to t so you'll get some expression in s and t but there you will put t equal to infinity and t equal to zero so t is become dire it's vanished it's no i can't see t in the final expression but I'll see s, which means right hand side is a function of s, like what happened in the case of integral. Similar, very similar thing. I of ft became a function of s. Here also, L of ft will become a function of s. And to emphasize this, that you know, you see the Laplace transform of the function f of t is Laplace is a function whose independent variable is s. To emphasize this, we use this notation. L of ft 
is capital F of S. All through my lecture, I will keep using this notation. Small f stands for function of T, capital F stands for function of S, and capital F is precisely defined by this, the plus of Ft. So I, can, I could write small g and then I'll write capital G. If I write small h, I'll write capital H. -A. That means these small and capital are related to F. This is a notation, that's all. And also, I hope this is clear. This is the this is the notation basically. L of Ft, I'll use cap, I'll call it capital F of F. So whenever I write, even if I don't mention capital F of something, which means, oh, capital F is the plus of small f. Small f is what I'll tell you in the course of lecture. Uh, and also note that this integration is between t equal to 0 to infinity, which means what happens when t is negative is immaterial. Because t negative, uh, it's not even seen in the integration because t is between 0 and infinity. So what happens when it is t is negative, we don't care or we don't I mean, it may function may be defined, may not be defined, we don't care about it. So these are few things which you need to uh, be familiar with. The, the definition of Laplace transform, which is, I know it's pretty scary because, you know, you look at an expression like this, even if it's a simple thing like ft is sin t, L of ft is e power minus st sin t dt from 0 to infinity. It uh, scares anybody out. How do I do this integration? What? How do I carry out this integration? How do I find Laplace transform, etc., etc.? Don't worry. In your course, you don't have to worry too much about those questions. You have to worry a little bit, but not too much. I will show you what is relevant for you in your course. Uh, there are many more things one can tell uh, here, uh, but I will not tell in very general things. These are in general called integral transforms. Instead of e power minus e here, what has happened is, ft and multiplying by e power minus st and then integrating instead of e power minus st i can put some other function also uh, then i'll get an appropriate different kind of integral transform so uh, different integral transforms will have different properties but anyway don't bother too much about it this is in general known as integral transforms the, this is one example you will see in this course. You will see uh, why I am telling you in this generality. You will see two different integral transforms in this course. This is Laplace transform, and the other one, three in fact, you will see. Uh, another one you will see is uh, Fourier transform. And there is one more discrete analog of this, which is called Z transforms. All these three you will see in this lecture. So try to keep it in mind. Every time what we are doing, start with a function and multiply that function with some other function with some other independent variable then integrate this whole thing with respect to the whatever this variable and make this independent variable vanish by giving some limits to it in this case 0 to infinity uh, and then resulting i will get a function of this new independent variable that is in general an integral transform a lot of theories of integral transform which is very interesting and beautiful classically uh, it came about of course laplace was uh, I, uh, funny you know, laplace was not the guy who first used this uh, it was euler who used this but laplace made it uh, very popular and uh, sort of he used it to solve some very difficult problems euler even though he thought of this transform first Laplace was the one who actually used it to solve some that day's uh, important uh, problem, like differential equation, some particular differential equation which people didn't know how to solve. He told, hey, this is the method to solve that. So that's why it became famous as Laplace transform. I will tell you this more later. Uh, of course, there's a lot of beautiful things to say about Laplace. I suggest you Google out history of Laplace. Just Laplace is a, a human being, is a French mathematician. So just uh, go and uh, Google out and see. It's quite interesting. Uh, of course, as I said, this definition scares anybody out. L of ft is integral of e power minus ft, ft dt from 0 to infinity. And there is no clarity in the usefulness of this definition. Why would anybody want to do this? Nobody knows. I mean, right now, we don't know. Once you do this definition, once you uh, understand how to find Laplace transform of various things, I will tell you why we did this. Yeah, I know it's a bit of a, a you know, I don't know why am I doing, but I have to do it. That kind of thing it is. 
but I can only tell you that Laplace transforms are used to solve differential equations. So that's a good enough aim for an engineer. Engineers come up with lots of different differential equations, and you want to know how to solve it. So Laplace transform is one way of doing this. Uh, as I have written here, application of this will become apparent as we study its properties. First, let's go through a few elementary examples. Okay, here are some examples. Let us take this first. Says, uh, so this we have seen already. This is the definition, and uh, this is the example I want to start with. Uh, Fp is one. So this is a constant function. Constant function. Function is one all the time. Ft equal to one. Well, t is non-negative. It doesn't matter t negative or uh, non-negative because if t is not negative anyway, I don't care because after all, I'm interested in Laplace transform where I'm taking integral from zero to infinity. Anyway, right now I'll take this function which is constant. I suggest right now I will not do it, but later on I will do it and I will uh, show you also. But before that, you try to graph this function if t equal to one. Hmm. How does it look? Take a few minutes, t equal to 0, if t is 1, t equal to 1, if t is 1, t equal to 2, if t equal to 1, t equal to 2.5, if t equal to 1. So if you write t axis on the t value on the x axis, if t is 1. So it's basically a straight line parallel to x axis passing through 0, 0,1. Uh, but I'm interested only t non negative, so it will be only on the in the first quadrant, I don't bother about that. What happens in the second quadrant? So that's the function, and I want to find its Laplace transform. Uh, by definition, L of ft is capital F of s. Please, I'm writing this because I want this notation to go through you, go through your head as quickly as possible. It's very important to understand this notation. L of a small ft is capital F of s, which by definition is what is L of ft? integral of e power minus st into ft dt t varying from 0 to infinity in this particular example ft is equal to 1 so i'll replace ft by 1 oh then it is e power minus st into 1 that e power minus st into 1 is same as e power minus st e power minus st dt so you should know how to so that means i'm integrating with respect to t and i want to know how to integrate e power minus st what is it? Before I show the next slide, can you write it down? What is the integral of e power minus st? Yes, many of you might have got it. It's correct. e power minus, remember, e power ax, integral of e power ax dx is 1 by a e power ax. So here it's the same thing. a is, a is a constant. Here s is a constant. Uh, I know. Sir, so, you just now you told it's an independent variable. Now I'm saying S is a constant. S is a constant within this integration. That means in this, here I'm integrating with respect to T. So S, I can treat it as constant in the sense S is not dependent on T. S is not really a constant. S is not dependent on T. So integral of e power minus ST is e power minus ST divided by minus S and integral limits between t equal to 0 and t equal to infinity. I hope this is clear. It's like uh, integrating e power ax. Integral of e power ax dx is 1 by a e power ax. Here a happens to be minus s. We treat it as constant basically because it is not dependent on t. I'm not telling s is constant. I'm just telling s is not dependent on t so I can take it out. I can treat it as if it's a constant when I'm integrating with respect to t. So this you know how to integrate, I mean you have integrated, you know how to put the limits to t equal to infinity and t equal to 0. When you put t equal to infinity, I'll get minus 1 by s, I'll write it as it is. In the bracket, I'll write e power, if I put t equal to infinity, I'll minus st will become minus infinity. And if I put t equal to 0, it will become e power 0. e power minus infinity minus e power 0. I want s to be positive here. I know these are all small you know, splitting of hair because of mathematics, which you can't avoid, but we won't spend too much time trying to understand this. You see, what happens is if S is uh, positive, only then I can write this as minus infinity. Because if S is negative, uh, if S is negative, for example, minus 2, then e power minus st will become.
infinity when t is infinity is very large and infinity minus something doesn't make sense so i don't want s to be negative i'll take s to be positive if i take s to be positive e power minus st will be negative because t is anyway non negative so this is non negative remember st so minus st will be for negative so e power minus st means e power minus infinity will be very small because this will be like 1 by e power infinity so 1 by e power infinity is zero and this side is anyway e power zero so that is one no problem so if you evaluate this we will get 1 by s i hope these steps are clear to you laplace of f of t when f of t is one is by definition laplace of ft is e power minus st ft but ft is one so it's between zero and infinity i have to integrate e power minus st which becomes e power minus st by minus s i'll keep one by minus s outside inside i'll get i'll put t equal to infinity i'll get e power minus infinity minus e power zero i'm putting t equal to infinity once and t equal to zero and e power minus st and s i want to be positive if s is negative this integral doesn't even make sense I mean, rather this limit doesn't make sense because e power infinity is become kind of thing this will keep coming uh, regularly in the plus transform uh, but we will ignore mostly if you are mathematics students i would have spent more time in trying to speak here here but i will not bother too much about it uh, you the upshot of this is you need to know that the class of this constant function one is one by s that is the important thing for you see here it is l of this is how it is written l of one is one by s where s is positive why s is positive i just told you what if s is negative s is negative is not even defined we don't know we don't care but i am telling you a new function which is one by s where s is positive so you can't ask me what if s is negative this is negative i'm not telling you anything this it's not defined at all anyway we do, let's not get into arguments on those things uh, but this is what you need to know the upshot is that the class of a constant of the constant function whose value is one everywhere is one by s where s is positive this is the upshot means this is what you need to remember for your examination and to complete various class this integration is very easy but uh, in your syllabus it says this proof is not there i don't know what does it mean because unless you know this very simple integration i don't know how you are going to carry out more complicated integrations later so in any case i give you the proof but nobody will ask you this in the exam what you need to know is the class of constant function which takes value one everywhere is one by s let us try to see some other functions so this is what i was telling you t zero to infinity h t if you take integral of ht from 0 to infinity then uh, it may be an improper integral so to avoid such uh, technical problems we write 0 to capital t where capital t tends to infinity limit of capital t tends to infinity let me not bother too much about this uh, hair splitting but i wanted to be correct so i written, included this slide uh, let us take another example next i will take purposely exponential function not trigonometric function exponential function. Let us take this function f t equal to e power a t where a is some constant. Now I want to find Laplace transform of e power a t. How to do that? So let us use definition. So definition says capital F of s which is L of f t is integral of e power minus s t into f t which is e power a t dt from 0 to infinity. Don't worry the proof is not there in your syllabus but I am just going to explain this. So integral of e power minus st into e power at dt between t equal to 0 and t equal to infinity i'll rewrite this as e power minus of s minus a t note s is not dependent on t and a is of course a constant so it is like integrating e power minus alpha x dx so that is nothing but 1 by alpha alpha is minus s by a here e power alpha x that is e power minus s minus a t between 0 and infinity similar to arguments before you can check when you put s equal to t equal to infinity this will become 
zero and then you put t equal to zero this will become one so zero minus one which is minus one and that will get cancelled with this minus and i get one by s minus a and here again s goes to be greater than a because if s is less than a this will be negative and negative into negative positive equal t when t is going to infinity is undefined means it's infinity so we don't want such uh, problems so we will say we want s to be greater than a so that means um, the class of e power a b is 1 by s minus a that is what the upshot of this uh, derivation is Le uh, re recall the class of e power a b is 1 by s minus a these are things which you need to know very well not how to integrate but the final answer so instead of going on computing the class of different functions we observe, let us see some general properties of Laplace transform. Let's see if that helps. Because this is a boring kind of integration. So let us see. Uh, as a first step, one observes, if one has to work it out, one observes means it doesn't come by us. We have to do it. Uh, that Laplace transform is a linear transformation. What does it mean? I have already told you what does a linear transformation mean. For example, what do you mean by D is linear transformation, differentiation of linear transformation, D of F x plus g of x is d of f of x plus d of g of x and also d of a times f of x is equal to a times d of f of x. Similarly, integration was a linear of transformation mean what i of f of x plus g of x is equal to i of f of x plus i of g of x and i of a times f of x is a times i of f of x. Similarly, I want to see if L also satisfies this property. That means I want to see if L of f of t plus g t is L of f t plus L of g t. That's very easily verified. Of course, it is true because L of f t plus g t is I'll multiply f of t plus g of t by e power minus s t. But then I can multiply f of t by e power minus s t and g of t by e power minus s t and then integrate. That is also these two are same because integration is a linear of transformation. So this is true. I won't write the proof. But you must observe this. That's all. L of ft plus gt is L of ft plus L of gt. And also for any constant, L of a times ft is a times L of ft. Because just both ways follow from uh, you know, first the first definition itself, definition of Laplace transform. So Laplace transform is also what is known as a linear transformation, which means Laplace of, of a ft plus b gt is a times L of ft plus b times L of gt. Where a and b are any constants, any constants, remember, nothing to do with real number, it can even be complex numbers. In fact, we are going to use that soon. So, this is very important property of Laplace transform. That is why I wanted you to look at Laplace transform like playing with functions. For example, differentiation and integration or linear transformation. You are playing with functions. I give you one function, you can give me its derivative. I give you one function, you can give me its integration. Integration between some limits and things like that. So they were linear proper linear transformations. Similarly, Laplace is also a linear transformation. What does it do? That we will see later. But try to understand that it's a linear transformation. That is sufficient for you. So let us try to find Laplace transform of the trigonometric functions, sine and cosine functions. Again, I'll emphasize this is not in your syllabus, but you must know the answer. You don't have to know the proof. But let me give you a word of advice. If you don't know how to do this, very unlikely you will know how to do other integration because these are very elementary integration. You must know this. Uh, one extra thing you need to know to do this is there are several ways of doing but what I am using here is what is known as Euler's formula. You must have used Euler's formula. You must have seen it in your class uh, 12 or something like that. Or definitely your first year B you have seen. Euler's formula is this, what you see on your uh, screen. e power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta, where i is square root of minus 1. It's a complex number. This is a very standard kind of thing. I, If I start explaining the geometry of this, it will take me far away from what I want to do in this course. So I highly recommend you to go back and look up your class 12 uh, textbook in complex numbers, which tells you this Euler's formula, which is e power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta. This is what I will use. Okay. In fact, this is the definition of cos and sin actually. So anyway, let me not bother about it. I will just use this formula. 
Okay, so how do I use that? Here it is. Uh, if you put the, in this uh, formula, if you put theta equal to a times t, because I want t is to be the function, uh, I mean, everything I want it to be a function of t. So theta, instead of theta, if I put a t, I'll get e power i t, a t, e power i a t is cos a t plus i sin a t. Remember, t is the variable and a is some constant. So then I know Laplace transform is linear. So L of e power i a t is L of e power i a t is cos a t plus i sin a t. So Laplace of e power i a t is Laplace of cos a t plus i sin a t, which by linearity says whether you add here or you take Laplace and then add both are same. L of f t plus g t is L of f t plus L of g t. This means L of cos a t plus i sin a t is L of cos a t plus i L of sin a t. Actually, I L of i sin a t, but I can pull out because it's a constant. So L of e power i a t is cos a t plus i L sin a t. Somehow, if I can find this and break it up into real and complex part, then this is the real part and this is the complex part. So real part of Laplace of e power i a t is L of cos a t and complex part of L of e power i a t is L of sin a t. I will have found L of cos a t and sin a t together at one way. So how to do this? Here I am giving you the details. I know previously I already found that L of e power a t is 1 by s minus a. We just saw it in this example too. L of e power a t is 1 by s minus a. So L of i a t L of e power i a t is 1 by s minus a. We place a by i a, that's all. I never said a must be a real number. It could be any uh, complex number also is okay. Uh, so L of e power i a t is 1 by s minus a. Uh, I'll rationalize the denominator in the usual way, which is I multiply and divide by s plus i a. Then I'll get this expression s plus i a divided by s squared minus s squared plus a squared which is, I'll break it up into real and complex part, s by s square plus a square plus i times a by s square plus a square. Uh, so this means cos a, this, uh, the, the typo here, this must be L of cos a t plus i, a, I sin a t is L of e power i a t, which is equal to s by s square plus a square plus i by s square plus a square. So which means L of Cos uh, in this slide it's written correctly. Previous one, please make that correction. L of cos a t plus i L of sin a t is L of e power i a t. That's what we saw in the previous slide. This is equal to s square plus a square plus i times a by s square plus a square from this. So equating real and complex part, I get L of cos a t is s by s square plus a square. L of sin a t is a by s square plus a square. These are the two things I get. So these are two very important things for me. I found Laplace transform of two uh, functions at one go of uh, trigonometric functions. So what all have I found? I have found Laplace of constant function. I have found Laplace of uh, e power a t. I have found Laplace of cos a t and sin a t. Four functions we have found. And also we have seen that Laplace is linear. So we use all these together. There's one more, to be, two more to be done. Uh, let me see how much time do I have. Oh, I still have time for doing those. So let me continue. So the next function for which I want to find Laplace transform is hyperbolic functions. Uh, hyperbolic function by definition, many of you may not remember, so I am writing it down here. Cos hyperbolic AT is e power AT plus e power minus AT by 2. And similarly, sine hyperbolic AT is e power AT plus minus e power minus AT by 2. So these are the definitions. Don't ask me why it is so. This is the definition of cos hyperbolic and sine hyperbolic. Now I want to find Laplace of these functions. They are the next functions for which I want to find Laplace transform. These are all elementary functions. That's why I'm trying to find Laplace of all these things. So L of cos H AT is L of e power a t plus e power minus a t by 2. But then by linearity, I can take half out and break up L of e power a t plus e L of e power minus a t. That's precisely what I have done here. L of cos h a t is half L of e power a t plus L of e power minus a t. 
I know I love heap power 80. Just now we found that this is 1 by s minus 80. And so I love heap power minus 80 is 1 by s minus minus a, which is s plus a. So you evaluate this, you get s by s square minus a square. So you must, I mean, there's nothing much to know in this, but it is not in your syllabus. But unless you know these elementary things, there is no way you can solve, uh, find Laplace transform of more complicated functions. So here, what is the upshot? L of cos of hy cos hyperbolic AT is S by S square minus A square. And similarly, L of Laplace of sine hyperbolic AT is 1 by S square minus A square. This is written down the details here. You can check. It's, it just follows from definition of Laplace and two properties of Laplace. One is Lapla what is Laplace of E power AT and another is Laplace is a linear of transformation. So Laplace of um, you know, cos H A T is same as half times Laplace of E power A T plus half times Laplace of E power minus A T. Both we have evaluated, we have written it down. So you must remember this. Laplace of cos H A T is S by S square minus S square. Laplace of sine hyperbolic A T is 1 by S square minus S square. Now let us find Laplace of another very important function. You see, normally this is the first function which you would have seen, polynomial function. But here, today we started with constant function and then we went to exponential function, which was the last type of function which you studied actually. Because it's easier to do. Polynomial is a bit more tricky. Uh, we will do it, don't worry, we have, we'll do it. Uh, then we did, so we have found Laplace transform for constant function, exponential function, so trigonometric functions and uh, hyperbolic functions. Now we will try to find Laplace transform of a polynomial. So let us take polynomial means I will not bother about general polynomial. I will find for a monomial. Why? Because if I, if I know if I know Laplace transform of t power n, I know what is Laplace transform of 3 t power n. How do I know? I will just pull out 3 that's all. I know Laplace transform of t power n plus uh, something 3 t to power n minus 1. Because if I know L of t power n, I know L of t power n minus 1 also. Then I pull out the constant. So any polynomial can be found if I know Laplace of a monomial t power n. Just this one is required. We use linearity property and we can find Laplace of any one else, any other polynomial. So how to find Laplace of t power n? Don't worry, it's not in your syllabus, but it's very simple. Laplace of t power n by definition is t power n e power minus s t d d for integration limits from 0 to infinity. But now the problem is how am I going to integrate this? T power n e power minus st. How do how have you done this kind of integration prior to this? Do you know how to integrate this? T power n e power minus st. Just think for one minute. This you do by integration by parts. You take first function into second function. This is, its integral is easy to find. e power minus st integral is uh, minus 1 by s e power minus st. So use that and uh, I have not written on the details here because it's not in your syllabus but it's very easy. Just do it. You will get what I have written here. L of t power n is n by s l t power n minus 1. This is the sort of recurrence relation. If I know Laplace of t power n, I can find Laplace of t power n minus 1. Or if I know Laplace of t power n minus 1, I can find Laplace of t power n. All I have to do is multiply by n by s. That's what I have to do. So now I can continue carrying out this repeatedly. Uh, if I know L of, for example, what it means is, if I know L of t power, I mean, if I want to know L of t power 10, I first need to know L of t power 9. If I want to L of, know L of t power 9, I need to know L of t power 8. If I want to know L of t power 8, I need to know L of t power 7. Like this, I'll keep on coming down. If I want to know L of t cube, I need to know L of t square. If I want to know L of t square, I need to know L of t. If I want to know L of t, I need to know L of 1. But L of 1, I already found it. So I know L of t. You put n equal to 1 in this. We we'll get L of t is equal to 1 by s into L of t to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 0, which is 1. Means t power 0 is 1. So L of 1, I found it already, 1 by s. So I'll get 1 by s square. 
as L of T. I hope this process is clear. This is very important for me. From once I know L of T, I know L of T square. How do I know? L of T square is 2 divided by S into L of 2 minus 1, which is 1. So which is L of T. L of T I just know from 1 by L square. So it is 2 by S into 1 by S, which is 2 by S square answer. L of T square. Like that, you keep on doing it for all P power n. You repeat it n times, and L of 1 I know is 1 by S, so we get L of P power n is n factorial divided by S to the power of n plus 1. Uh, <coughs> n factorial, you know, it is n into n minus 1, etc., etc., because I'll keep getting these terms continuously. Once in your life, you must carry out this uh, repeated uh, integration or repeated. Uh, repeatedly apply this formula to find say L of t power 5. If you try to do it, then you will understand this formula. If you don't want to do it, just remember this formula. L of t power n is n factorial divided by s to the power of n plus 1. <coughs> so in our course, in this course, we are not interested in finding Laplace transform of more elementary functions, lots of things. We won't do it. Instead of that, we will use what is known as table of Laplace transform. It's like table of logarithms. You have table of logarithms. You give me a number and there is a table which tells me what that logarithm is. Similarly, there is a table. You give me a function. It will tell you what is the uh, uh, Laplace of that. So there are plenty of them. You just type Laplace transform, table of Laplace transform. You will see, uh, you will see that uh, this will be uh, table of Laplace transforms are available on the internet several places. I have chosen this particular one. In, uh, means it's there in your. Uh, let me check if it goes to the open But you can go and check. This is the website. But in any case, even if you don't, uh, for your course, this is the Laplace table of Laplace transforms which is relevant for you. So uh, let me explain how to read this. Uh, just one minute. How much time do I have? I have four more minutes. Okay. So I think I can explain this. No problem. So table of Laplace transform tells that for this function, this is the Laplace transform. This is F T. This is L of F T, which is denoted as capital F of S. So if F T is one, Laplace of one is one by S. Can you understand this? This is F T. This is F of capital F of S. Small ft, capital F of S. That means small ft, it's Laplace. If e power at is there, it's Laplace. Trans if the function is ft is equal to e power at, it's Laplace is 1 by s minus a. That we have seen already. So in your for your exam and for your course, you need to understand, remember this table. You don't have to understand, but if you don't understand this, it will be difficult. We have already proved all these things except this these two in full detail this i have done more or less um, not in full detail but whatever i have done if you understand and if you write it down you will get the proof this last one e power p i have not done but that's okay uh, so let me repeat laplace of constant function one is one by s laplace of e power a t is one by s minus a laplace of sin a t is a by s square plus a square Laplace of cos a t is s by s square plus a square. Similarly, Laplace of hyperbolic sine is a by s square minus a square. Laplace of hyperbolic cos is s by s square minus a square. Laplace of t power n, where n is an integer. That means it can be t power 1, t power 2, t power 3, t power 0 also, t power 5, t power 100, t power 1000, t power minus 100 also is possible. Oh, but minus 100 you don't know. How do I do it? So let's not bother. This is not an integer. It's a non-negative integer should be. That's what it should be there. It is n factorial divided by s to the power of n plus 1. There is an extension of this. It says for t power p, where p is any number greater than minus 1. It will not be integer. This is what I was trying to tell. So for example, p can be half. p can be 10.5. p can be 13.2. Anything it can be. Any of the numbers it can be. It will not be an integer. Then so Laplace of t power p is gamma p plus 1 by s p power s to the power of p plus 1 whereas this is gamma function so recall i don't have energy time to recall the definition of gamma function but i'm sure if you go to your first year uh, textbook or notes you'll be able to see the definition of gamma function 
So you better learn gamma function well and its properties. They are important and relevant for this course. So Laplace, so this is the table of Laplace transformation which you need to remember for your examination. Laplace of these eight functions you need to remember. Which are the eight functions? Constant function, exponential function, two trigonometric functions, two hyperbolic functions, one polynomial with uh, n uh, the degree being an integer, and another polynomial where degree is not necessarily integer, it can be any number greater than minus one. In that case, this will be the Laplace transform of this. So these are the uh, this is the uh, Lapla table of Laplace transform which you need to remember. Uh, next, uh, I want to yeah, I want to show you how I can use this table of Laplace transform to find Laplace of different functions. For example, I want to find Laplace of this. Do I have the time? I think it is time up now, so I will not bother about uh, telling you this. But in my next class onwards, I will tell you how to compute Laplace of this kind of functions. Not very difficult. Follow it follows basically from whatever uh, we have done till now. We'll put them all together. That's all. Thank you. I'll stop here for today.